Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss of Internet Shitlords, and today I'm going to be doing an, an overview, a designer's notes on social encounters along the Silk Road at long last. <laughs> so I'd, I'd had this book sent to me, of course, you know, this, one, this is one of my own books, right? So I'm talking about, you know, what's in it and how I designed it. This is essentially a way for you to know whether or not you'd want to buy it. Um, I had I had finished this book quite some time ago, and I ordered for drive through to send it to me, uh, or no, actually my publisher arranged that, um, Mad Scribe, and I got a copy of this this book. But when I got it, it turned out that it, there was some slight kind of misprint in there. There was a bunch of material from another book completely that was intermingled in the in the product. Um, now, luckily, oh, here comes me, Paul. <laughs> luckily, to uh, to drive throughs credit, uh, they they very quickly just sent out another another copy. But of course, sending out another copy to where I live takes time. So it only just finally arrived. So here it is now. It's currently under Meatball. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Meatball. <laughs> Thank you for moving out of the way. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna take a look at it now in the review. What's up, Meatball? Uh, she's got strong opinions about <laughs> about social encounters. So here it is, Social Encounters Along the Silk Road. As you can see, it's a small book. This book is, originally, it was going to be only a PDF product, but the people who bought the PDF liked it so much, and so many of them stated that they wanted a copy. So it's only like, is that, come on, focus, dude. 20 pages. It's only 20 pages long, okay? But, um, like, and it was originally PDF only, like, uh, the, the publisher said, well, we're just doing this as a PDF. I said, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but then we had a ton of people said, no, no, I want a print copy of this. So they made a print copy. And um, the print copy is the same as the PDF, obviously. But uh, as you can see, it's got nice color detailing. Um, it's got that excellent, you know, Mad Scribe does really, really excellent uh, layout. And, um, you know, the overall design, the art. The colors are very crisp. And even though this book, I guess the first thing I should say is that even though this book says social encounters along the Silk Road, um, you'll notice it's a Game Master supplement for medieval authentic adventures. Okay, so is this a source book for Sword and Caravan? Yes. Can it be used for anything else? Yes. Uh, <laughs> some of the examples in the product are going to be specifically oriented to some but but only a couple, really, uh, to some of the things that you would find specifically in the Silk Road setting of Sword and Caravan. Um, but you could use it just as easily with Lion and Dragon, not with Meatball, um, or with, uh, you know, other, other medieval authentic settings. Or you could, you know, the basic mechanics of this you can use for any OSR product. Because what Social Encounters is, is that it takes the old 2D6 reaction rule system and expands it into a more complex system for determining the results of specific social encounters. And that's, that's what this is all about. Um, so it's a way to do, to have some form for the DM to adjudicate um, social situations without having to rely on like um, D20 style social skills without having like social combat or other story gamey stuff like this. Um, but rather based on what the characters are doing, um, what is the influences around them? And, you know, finally uh, some element of, of charisma and luck. So the basic social skills, social uh, reaction checks, you probably already know if you've ever played D and D, I mean, um, there, there was more than one reaction roll system, but I think that the most famous one is the one that originated in the in the basic expert set, which is you roll 2d6, you add your charisma modifier, and you compare that to a table to de determine um, how, how much you um, manage to ingratiate yourself or, or, or make hostile a monster. They were originally meant for monster encounters, right? Like, is the monster going to automatically immediately start trying to eat you? Is it going to be cautious? Is it going to be friendly? You know, um, and and as it was actually, those rules in their basic form were a little bit too basic to be to be really very functional most of the time. You know, um, which is why morale rules were used more often than reaction rules. Um, but it was obvious too for a lot of people. I didn't make this up, of course. I didn't invent this. 
But it was obvious for a lot of people that those basic reaction rules could be um, used as like a f- initial framework for all kinds of other stuff, for all other sorts of reactions. Um, so not just for when you like run into a bugbear in the dungeon, but also for like when you're trying to, to ask for information in the city streets, right? Or stuff like that, you know, when you're, or when you're dealing, you know, you're in front of the court of a nobleman. How is that nobleman reacting to you, right? So what I do is I add to that a set of um, more complex elements, including that the, per- the people you're interacting with will have certain values, right? And so those values will modify your reaction in one direction or another. Second, they will have certain interests, so things that they want or don't or don't want to happen. And so if the thing that you're trying to get from them or argue with them about is something that um, aligns with their interests, it'll be easier for you. If it's if it's in contrast to their interests, it'll be harder. And then there's also like situational modifiers. OK, so specific things that have to do with the particular type of thing you're trying to do and where you're trying to do it. So the rest of the book after that is a series of examples, which have all of it worked out for you. Now, this is the part where it's technically all worked out in the context of the the sword and caravan setting. But most of them are pretty, you know, broadly appealable. So like, obviously, animal handling, if you're trying to handle a beast, you know, um, that's something that is the same anywhere, right? So that that's going to be practically the same. Um, Bribery of judges or officials, this might be a little bit more work but um it's it's still there's still very little here that is going to be very specific to the in fact i I can't see anything in this section that would be specific only to the silk road so um you could do it i mean because again a a, a, an official is an official right they'll have certain values or not they'll have certain interests they'll have certain factors uh disputation that's a term for a medieval debate so do you win a do you have does your character ever have to get into a formal debate right will he win <laughs> and uh here again there's you know um there's going to be maybe some situational modifiers that would be a little bit different depending on your world and you know what how much value is placed on things like religion um but it's it's going to be a very small difference gambling gossip and information gathering haggling Meatball, um, impersonation, intimidation, legal cases, public speaking, rumor mongering, seduction, um, and of course, this isn't the the complete list of what you can do with this, right? So the basic system is at the first pages there, and you can do and yeah, well, and seduction. I guess that's all, <laughs> but. Uh, let me see how many there is in total here, because I forget. Um, so there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve specific examples in the book of what you can do, right? Of what you can do with this with this reaction rule mechanic. But the basic guide, which is at the beginning of the book, lets you if you if you come up with a situation that isn't one of these, you can do it yourself. And that's basically what Social Encounters does. And it makes it a very useful tool for a DM mainly to adjudicate social interactions in an OSR game where what you don't want is for the main thing to be that, oh, the guy that put the most skill points into diplomacy is the one that's going to be able to convince anyone of anything and everybody else can't, right? There's a good balance in this in this system between – what the player is having his character do, like what he's role-playing, what his plan is, because like, for example, let's say you've got, you're, you've got a character, he wants to, uh, to bribe a guard so he can be let through the gate, okay? And so this character is going to be relying, obviously, on a little bit of luck. Those are the dice. Uh, on his charisma, that's his charisma modifier. And then the other thing he's going to be dependent on is his plan. Right. Like, what is it he wants to achieve? So is what he wants to achieve something that the guard he approaches is going to be in favor or against? Right. And is he going to well, if he's going to lie to the guard, then is that lie a lie that would that the that the guard would be prone to believe or not? Right. And those things modify it. 
um, if he's gonna if he's gonna bribe the guard, how much money is he giving? Or maybe money doesn't actually work at all, but something else does. Um, so, like, there might be one type of guard that would be completely um, that he would be completely untouchable when it comes to to uh, offering him money. No amount of money would convince him to turn. But like, if you if you knew about him having some issue with his daughter and he promised to help, that would convince him, right? Or on the other hand, there might be a, you might decide to like threaten the guard's family. And for one type of guard, that could probably really work. And for another type of guard, either because he has no family or he hates his family or whatever, that wouldn't work at all. And then the other thing that it judges is the degree of result. So that like in some cases, the guard might you know, physically attack you or call, you know, shout out the alarm. In another case, the guard might, um, you know, threaten you or send you away, but not really try to apprehend you. You know, um, in, in some cases, he might play coy, implying that he's trying to get, you know, he wants something else. Right. And so, you know, to see, to see what, what else is on offer. So the, these are all ways that the, using this system, you can, you can, to some degree, um, organize it in a way that will give, in my opinion, credible reactions, right? Based on the input you put in, the, you roll the dice and the, the, the response is what would, what would I, th- I think would be a credible response for the actions taken, okay? So that's what Social Encounters Along the Silk Road is for. You can pick it up on Drive-Thru RPG. Um, I don't remember the price right now. I think that the, the print edition is... Is it $9? It might be $9, but I'm not sure. It'll be in the link in the description below. I probably should have looked that up beforehand, but I always forget about these things. I don't think it has a price tag on here, no. Um, but anyways, it's quite inexpensive. The, the PDF is even more inexpensive. Um, you probably get a combo there too. And uh, yeah, check it out. It's a useful tool for whatever you're doing, whether or not you have Sword and Caravan or any of my other games. You can use it if you're playing any kind of uh, OSR type RPG. And uh, while you're at it, check out my other products too, like Sword and Caravan and the Medieval Authentic Companion and Lion and Dragon. Meatball not included. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think that there's a there's a shipping system where <laughs> Meatball gets included. Um, and, uh, you know, all my other books and products, Star Adventure. If you want another little book of mine that, that, it, that doesn't cost a lot of money but packs a lot of punch, check out Star Adventure. It's only $9.99. Um, or um, any of my other stuff. And uh, yeah, just uh, check them out because uh, you're going to like it, because you're going to be able to use it in the OSR, or because you want to support me and the work that I do on here and other places in fighting the good fight for gamers, um, whichever is all right. And uh, yeah, that, that's everything, I guess, for today. So currently smoking, um, Stanwell Pipe of the Year 2019 plus Argento Roots. <laughs>